Welcome to Salvation Celebration, a presentation of Christ for All People Ministries, going into all the world to spread the never-changing good news that God loves you and wants you to be saved, teaching the Word of God, and serving others. And now here is Jim McCarroll, Minister of the Gospel. Hi, and welcome to today's television broadcast. Man, we've got a great show for you. I'm really excited about this. We've got a special guest with a testimony. Man, this is one of the most interesting testimonies I've ever heard in my life. But anyway, folks, last show we were talking about, the title was uh, Torn Between Two Lovers. And we talked about reading in Revelation. And, uh, and I just want to read that real quick just so we lay a foundation in Revelation chapter 2. And he's writing to the church. And he says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. And hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and has not fainted. Folks, that's all good things. You know, this, you can be doing all kind of good things in your life, and all the good things are happening in your ministry, and your life, and your family. But look at this. He says, nevertheless. <laughs> when Jesus says, nevertheless, take special attention to that. I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Wow. You've left their first love. And that was the basis that we were talking about. And it, that, that many Christians, and, and I would dare say almost all Christians, you first get born again and set free, you love the Lord and you feel the love of God and the power of God in your life. And next thing you know, you get involved in all kinds of things. You start doing a lot of works that aren't godly. They're manly things. And, and before you know it, I've said it on this show a lot of times, that you can end up ultimately being like a little hamster on a wheel at Walmart. You're like that little rat on the wheel and you're not going anywhere. And that's not God's plan for your life. You've left your first love. And you know, we know that Jesus taught us when they came and asked you what the greatest commandment was. He said it's real simple, just like this. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. It's that simple, folks. Love God, love your neighbor. Let God flow through you. Put your trust in what Jesus did on the cross, that he conquered death, hell, and the grave. You know, he, did, he stayed in that tomb for three days because he only needed it three days. That's why he borrowed it. He didn't, he didn't put it on an installment plan. Folks, I just want to just let you know right here that God loves you and wants you to be saved. And you know what? When we receive Christ, we receive his righteousness. That means you're in right standing with God. If you're in right standing with God, you'll love people. You'll love your neighbor as yourself. But we got to love God first, and he needs to be number one in our life. Folks, we talked a lot in the last show about not loving the things of the world over here. And, and you know what? We also talked a lot in this show about how to be in the will of God. You know, you need to be where you're supposed to be. Anybody who's ever been in the, in the armed forces know you need to be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. That's the biggest whole part of being in the military. Just be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there and you'll be all right. It's the same way for a Christian because we're literally soldiers in God's army. But you know what? I want to take a minute right now and I want to introduce a man with a very impressive testimony. His name is Chet Grimsley. Did I say that right, Chet? Yes, sir. Welcome to the show, brother. Thank I'm you. so glad to have you. Glad to and, be here. And, 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 mm -hmm. and man, you were telling me your testimony and, and uh, you had grown up on the south side of Atlanta. Right, south side of Atlanta, Thurl High School. Yeah, in, in an all black school. Right. All black <laughs> neighborhood. Right. Uh, no doubt had all kind of racial things uh, that you've suffered through, right? Sure. And uh, learned to live for the Lord. That's the main thing. And uh, tell them that college you went to when you, you real, yeah. tell them about your high school football and what it was like. My high school football was at Thurl High School in Atlanta, Georgia, and it was a pretty rough time. Uh, most of the white students left out to other schools in Decatur and other schools and sort of left on my own. My mom had MS. And my dad hurt his back, and mm. I was working at nights, and I played football and sports and went to school and didn't know where I was headed. And uh, funny story I can tell you out of my school was I was playing left field. Uh -huh. From my high school, I had a good baseball team, and uh -huh. I made a good catch. And after the game, this coach came up to me, a black coach. His name was Coach Cox, and he said, Chet, is that you? And I said, yes, sir. He said, I'm Coach Cox from John C. Smith University. I'm here to recruit you. I said, man, that's great. I'm ready to play baseball. He said, no, you're not playing baseball. You're playing football. I said, what are you talking about? He said, yeah, we want you to play football. I said, where's John C. Smith University? He said, Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, you got to realize that's before the internet. Yeah. We still had the telephone. You really didn't know. We had to go look yeah. it up in the library. Where am I going? Yeah. And uh, he took me through the halls, and I was a hall monitor. Uh -huh. And he said, uh, what are you doing? I said, I'm the hall monitor, too. It was, it was, they had 
after night classes. Yeah. And I was throwing a couple guys around, black guys. Yeah. He said, man, you're pretty good at this. He said, wait till you get to school up there, you'll be just fine there. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, it's all black college. And I said, I said, what, what difference? He said, a lot bigger, but you're going to enjoy a lot of people. There's more people up there that's going to appreciate you for who you are, except for your physical talents. And I said, okay, coach. But he said, I'm getting you out of here because he said, I don't want to stay. I'm getting out of here. He didn't even want to stay at my school. He, he <laughs> hopped in his car and left. It was a rough neighborhood, in other Yeah, words. he said, I'm getting out of his yeah. neighborhood. Is there a better neighborhood? Yeah. And I said, well, this is my neighborhood. They want to go eat. No, uh, let's go some other neighborhood. So yeah. we drove up to Decatur and we ate there and then we signed a scholarship and they ended up going to Johnson C. Smith University in Charlotte, North Carolina, which by chance is the first black intercollegiate football team to win a game. In 1869, I scored four to nothing against Lewistone University. It was a historical school. Wow. Yes. I didn't know that. How about that? Yes. Well, let me ask you something now. I was just sitting there thinking that if you were, and I remember, because I'm just a little younger than you are, that, and folks, you need to understand this, that during that time, there was a lot of racial division in America. Uh, the Civil Rights Act had made, especially in the South, had made a lot of people like, they had the white only water fountains, they had the white only bathrooms, and this is all starting to change, and it was a big turmoil. And you know, America almost came to like a civil war, I think. I remember the riots, people were rioting, and, and all this stuff, and so, there, to talk, talk a little bit about that, you know, how, it, 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 how God had put you in that position to where. Well, one thing God put me in that position is, uh, I entered the school, my dad, who was six foot eight, uh, 300 pounds, played for Alabama, Played for Tifton, uh, Georgia. He's 6'8", 300, and we arrived at the school. And uh, two other whites were there, and uh, we were three whites, and uh, we had scholarships. And these boys were bragging. We're from South Carolina, North Carolina. And uh, the God had put me on my mind. I said, I need a testimony. Mm -hmm. So I loaded 400 pounds of weights in my car. My dad said, what are you doing that for? I said, it's my testimony. He said, what's that for? He said, you know, you're not going to last more than one day there because you're only white. I said, Dad, I'm going to make it. So we drove up there, and there was people. got to realize in Charlotte at that time, it was a rough area. They had the prostitutes on one side of the corner and the liquor stores and the church's fried chickens. It wasn't the best of areas. So yeah. when I arrived, there was some altercation. Those guys were gigantic. Realized back in my days, I was six foot five, 255 pounds, which was small. Most guys back then were 6'6", six, 6'7", six, 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 because they could not, at that time, be accepted to white colleges. So yeah. we were massive. 17 guys went to play pro football with my team. Wow. Number, one, number two draft choice, Billy Corbett, 6'7", 295, went to Cleveland Browns, William Moore, Cleveland Browns, Pettis Norman, Dallas Cowboys. So I was with a lot of good people. But when I got there, the thing that really shocked me was my dad's doubt that I wouldn't make it. But the point was I saw when I started unloading those weights and I had to walk 82 steps up to my fourth uh, dorm, was on the fourth story. Weight by weight, people was watching me. And uh, they were saying some things like, oh, you ain't gonna make it, whatever. But I knew God had made me like building a bridge or building a wall. Each 25 or 45 pound weight, I walked up those 82 steps. I said, Lord, there's a reason me doing this because I'm not going to bring these weights back down until yeah, I leave. You came to stay. I couldn't say, Lord, they brought me for a reason. And when I got all the weights loaded up <clears throat> and everything in my room, my dad came up and one of my uh, other teammates was Big Willie from Philly. That's funny to say that. He was 6'9", yeah. yeah. 325. I was in the rings with some guys from Philly. And they don't I play. Don't they don't play. He said, white boy. Yeah. He said, You're on one, you sit on that one side. He says, uh, sir, we'll see you later. My dad had never run from nobody at six foot eight. They say he went down them steps, eight two steps, gave me a $20 bill, said, I'll see you later, son. And when he went down, we could see the smoke of his car leaving. I said, oh Lord, I got this $20 bill, but I'm not gonna let him down because mm. I brought these weights as a testimony that we're gonna build something here. Yeah. And now $20 is from my dad in a roundabout way saying, son, I believe in you. Yeah. So that's God leading me to weights, that, and bringing people to my room, which was the only weight room. We didn't have a weight room. We were really? so poor. Black college back then had a little weight room, but they didn't have the weights I had. So my testimony was I had the weight room. Oh. So I could bring people to me. So you were helping those guys get into the NFL because you were helping them get stronger. Yeah, I mean, I had the, uh, the equipment and it brought a good fellowship as far as Christian fellowship. And it just brought people, anybody, anybody yeah. come my way in my room, but it just brought a testimony to learn that? people, understand people, yeah. and it helped me 
mature as a person. Before we get too far in this show, tell them you 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 won. You were called the um, tell them that award. That you were the you're white, but you're the black all American. Right? right, right. The story goes. The story goes. Uh, Coach was talking to my dad before we, I got through with all those weights, and I'll share the story with you. Uh, there was a guy from my high school that I could not stand that tried to hurt me a few times. And we were playing Tuskegee University. Tuskegee was yeah. happened to come to our school because they were playing us. The guy didn't know that he was playing. I was even involved on this team. And I said, man, this is a blessing. This is a blessing bringing this boy here because yeah. I just said I can play against him. But the coach looked at my dad and says, well, I don't know if he's going to make it or not because these other two boys were really good. I was yeah. just your above average high school player because I didn't yeah. have the talent. I worked so much. Yeah. And uh, the coach says, son, how long do you think I'm going to make it? I says, coach, I'm going to be an All-American. He said, we don't have any All-Americans around here, especially white. And he says, how are you going to make All-American when you got to be black? And I said, well, I'm going to make it, coach. God's going to give me away. He said, God bless you, son. I hope you all wish you the How make. about that? And I did. Uh, four years later, I was made most of our player and player to you. The year. only white, black, All-American. Yeah. <laughs> and they called me. That's just me. like God. And he's going to break God, down the barriers. God really did because the coach said, Chet, you went from being – a white boy to a super cracker. That was his word. He meant it in the right way. He said, God bless you, son. Yeah, to a super cracker. That's what he called me. He said, you're a super cracker. Go out there and, yeah. and give faith to the world. You know what? That's a wonderful thing, folks. We're trying to make a point to you right here. You know, Jesus said, blessed are you when you're persecuted for righteousness sake. There's a lot of people get all upset and down. I've seen people quit church, brother, over people talking about them and persecuting them. Well, let me tell you something. You were persecuted for righteousness sake. You were doing the right thing. And, and, and you told me off camera that you talked about how it was, it was hard on you, but you never quit. Never quit. Let me tell you something, Christian friend. If quitting on God's ever an option, you're defeated already. Ask anybody. Ask any Navy SEAL. Ask any Marine. Ask any soldier. If surrender's an option, you're going to surrender. you got to have it in your mind today that you're going to stick with Jesus, that you're going to go all the way, that you're going to hold on to the nail-scarred hand of Jesus Christ till he takes you all the way to home. And we got a home, Christian friends. Don't forget, we're just pilgrims down here on this earth. This ain't my home world, brother. Right. That's why I don't love the things of the world anymore. It used to have a grip on me. I love stuff and money, yeah. and I was the stingiest person you ever met in your life. No. <laughs> oh, my God, I could tell, ask anybody. And you know what? God got in my heart and started loving everybody. I became a tither and a cheerful giver. You know what? That's a whole lot better to make sure that God has your money the same as he has you. See, if your heart, he has your money. Praise the Lord on that, brother. And you know what I'm talking about, Christian friends? But you got to not quit when you're persecuted because you're blessed because you were persecuted. I was very blessed, very blessed. And, and uh, God has just got me here for a reason. He's been a professional wrestler. Did I say that right? Wrestler? Wrestler. wrestler yeah. And uh, you got to play the, what you call it, the heel? You were the bad guy. Bad guy. <laughs> See, God will put you in places. The Bible says your gift will bring you, make room for you, and bring you before great men. And God gave you a gift for athletics. He did. He really and did. And he brought you before great men. He sure did. Your teammates, Hall of Fame type people. Amen to that. And you know what? We've got a mutual friend that's a, that's a Hall of Famer. And I'm going to tell you right now, not everybody can be in, a, in an athletic Hall of Fame. But you know what? You make it into heaven. That's a whole lot better than any Hall of Fame. <clears throat> and we're going there, brother. I share this story. As you see, uh, I'm, I'm holding a black college Hall of Fame ring like many people Okay. Honored to have is that it. what that is? Yes, that's my Hall of Fame ring from Black College. Wow. And I, <clears throat> and I have had a lot of people say, well, that doesn't mean that much, whatever. But bottom line is, it's not the Hall of Fame I wear for. I think about it. I think the testimony of God gave me the ability to uh, achieve what I need through faith in Christ to become one and share my testimony through this ring. Tell them that again, brother. Look right in that camera and it's tell them about it's a faith test in Christ. It's a, it's a testimony through the faith in Christ that, you know, this Hall of Fame Ooh. ring wasn't given to me by just myself or me. It was given to me by God, the ability, and my teammates. Without my teammates, I wouldn't be here. Without this ring, I wouldn't share this testimony that wow. God is good. You can achieve anything. I'm sitting here probably one of the only people with this Black College Hall of Fame ring. And it's not easy to get. This is bolder to pun. So God opened doors and opened people's hearts because not only did I work hard to get it, 
but I showed by not drinking, smoking, doing the right things, praying, and God has given me that ability to hold this ring right there and I hold it with honor because it's only through God to honor God and being a good person, but not only being a good person, but following his commandments. Whoo, glory. Tell me, brother, how much alcohol you ever drank? None. <laughs> oh, never tasted alcohol, I wish I could say. That's not my testimony, but that's the best testimony. Folks, I'm going to tell you right now. Too many, too many Christians today are in love with the things of the world. And you're snared. You're snared by that. You're scared by the every kind of teen, nicotine, codeine, caffeine, alcohol. Folks, it, 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 it ain't going to get it done. I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus Christ is real. The Holy Spirit is real, Chet. Amen. Amen. And boy, when you get that Holy Spirit, you know, the Bible says you can do all things. That's what the FCA, and you're involved in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. I love that organization. It's, great, it's a great organization. I can tell you a little history about a lot of people don't know. It was founded in 1953 by Don McClendon. He was a basketball player for Oklahoma A&M University. And he went, he went to Branch uh, Rickey and he asked him, he said, you know, you've got all these posters up here for cigarettes, alcohol, promoting all this stuff. Why can't you promote Christians? And he, at that time, he was about to sign Jackie Robinson. This man opened wow. his heart. He said, you know what? I need to open my heart because for me to thrive and us to thrive, we need God in our ability. At that point, he wrote out a $100,000 check, which was almost a million in today's world in 1953, and gave it to him in the offices in Kansas City, Missouri. And now we have almost, uh, I think it's 100,000 uh, different uh, groups uh, represented across the world represent wow. faith in Christ. But the funny story is all this was during that time, Jackie Robinson was put into the Los Angeles Dodgers also, which was a Christian, which was one of the first black Christians put in the organization. So it shows diversity to yeah. everybody. Yeah. Faith, faith through athletics, through, well, through everyone. Getting right it. now, the, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes is basically the only Christian organization operating in the schools on a consistent basis. Right. And I've told all the churches, and if you're a member of a church and you're sending mission money all around the world, you know what, Christian friends, you need to put some in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. They're doing a good work. Very vital to what we do through the uh, student rallies where we're bringing the gospel to the students and going right into the schools right there. It's an important thing, Chet. We need you to, you know, and, and if it wasn't for men like yourself and other accomplished athletes, for them to look up to, you know. Yeah. These kids need to be, the children... We, we say on these student rallies, we're inspiring them to achieve greatness because God's put greatness in these young people and the whole world is telling them just throw it away on any old thing. But God's got greatness in our young people and FCA is, is builds that up. Exactly. I'm wearing a band right here. Mm -hmm. I wear it every day. It tells me integrity, serving, teamwork, and excellence. Yes. FCA. Ooh. And the Lord. Honor God. That's the main thing. Honor God and yeah. listen and uh, make it make it happen. Put God, prioritize God first. Brother, I'm going to tell you, that really inspires me. You know, when you think about, and some of you young people don't understand this, and if some of you racists are watching this thing and you think you're better than people because they're a different color or whatever, and maybe you're Native American and you don't like white people, or you're white people and you don't like Native let me tell you something. You need to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to really, truly get born again. I've had people try and take a Bible, twist all the scriptures up and say that, that, that we're not all the same. But I'm going to tell you, my Bible says we come from all from the same blood. Amen, brother. And you know what the Bible tells us? That every kindred, every tribe, and every nation, there's people saved in that. Amen? Amen. And you got to get back to the point, friends, to realize that when I got born again by the Spirit of God, and if you're born again by the Spirit of God, that means I'm your brother. And if I'm your brother, that means I'm supposed to love you yes. because we're family. We're family. Forget all this division. The devil's trying to divide America right now. He's dividing us, folks. We can't let ourselves get divided. You're born again by the Spirit of God. You're my brother. I'm going to love you. I'm determined I'm going to love you, even if you insult. Sometimes people make you mad, but you know what? we got to get over that. Sure. Amen, amen. That's good stuff right there. Every kindred, every tribe, every tongue, every nation. He was in the army, a soldier in the army. You've been a professional bodyguard. Talk a little bit about that. We've got, I, I, you got about four minutes right there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my story goes, uh, I was in Tampa and I went to uh, wrestling school and wrestled at night and played football during the day. And we just didn't make much money back then. And uh, <clears throat> after one match, uh, 
of course I was the hill, I call it the violent dance. Uh, I went back to my car and my uh, tires were slid. I think I had $10 on me. I prayed and prayed mm -hmm. and I had an opportunity to go to San Diego Chargers play for them. But that's before the internet and everything else, I had $10. So I actually had to pawn one of my rings, which I got back my uh, another All-American ring to eat on. So I prayed and the Lord led me into the Army and I uh, ended up in the military intelligence school and were able to open up the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And uh, at that point, I met a colonel. He got me on the football team, wrestling team, which I was had the opportunity to win the All-Army Wrestling Championships through God and faith and hard work. And uh, he said, son, uh, he put me through bodyguard school, which is not cheap. And during that school, uh, I was able to work on weekends with some professional uh, actors and athletes. And uh, it really uh, opened my eyes. And I was also to share my testimony because people ask me why I never drank today. It's not only because of religion, because as a bodyguard, you take a vow. You will never drink. Mm. If Princess Diane bodyguard had not been drinking that day, she would still been alive. You take that vow. Yeah, that's you right. take a vow to I didn't the Lord. Know that. Yeah, you take a vow. And it's very important that you don't drink because you at all times you never know what you're going to be called. You're you on post that? like a soldier. You're a Marine. Yeah. I'm an Army. We're yeah. brothers in yeah. Christ, and I respect the Marines, respect yeah. the Army, because yeah. we work together yeah. for brothers. Same side. And we all have to work together. And Amen. if we got one Ooh, week link to the Lord, we got to bring that link back together. Amen. And if that's Amen. through testimony, through prayer, we got to do that, brother. Amen, brother. I'm going to tell you, man, I've really, Chet, the show's flown, flown by. We're almost out of time here. But you know what? There's many of you at home that have let circumstance tell you that you can't achieve anything. The whole world and the devil is telling people, Chet, well, you're from a broken home or you're the wrong color or you're on the wrong side of the tracks. Let me tell you something, Christian friend. You get born again by God's spirit, you're a child of God. Jesus said, pray like this, our father who art in heaven. He's your father, he's my father, your father in heaven. You got to learn to believe. You believe. One thing I hear about you, you believe. I believe. You believed you could you could be the only. You told me you were initiated in that fraternity. You was the only white person to ever be initiated, and it was so rough. Yeah, I spent two days and uh, two different times. I went to the hospital, and uh, they said it couldn't be done. And I kept praying. There was 23 of us, 24/7, and uh, they came from everywhere. And they said this white boy ain't gonna make it. And I said I'm gonna make it by the faith of the Lord. And the funny thing, the nine that made it out of 23, we were all Christians and small. The big guys dropped out that oh, didn't believe. Because yeah. we preach. believe we would not give up. Amen. Not only give up in the Bible, but we would not give up in life. Because we believe. Amen, brother. Hey, folks, you can't give up. Man, you're talking right to somebody right now. It's about, to, oh, I know that. You're about to give up. You said, Lord, if you don't send us a sign, I'm giving up. But I'm going to tell you right now, you got your sign right there. Here's your sign. Here's your son right here in the Bible. You can do all things through Christ. God spoke right to son. I feel it by the Spirit of God. Maybe you're in a jail cell. Maybe you're in the biggest mansion around here. If I don't know where you're at, God knows where you're at. Don't you give up on God. No, ma'am, no, sir. Just because life got hard. Too many people think because you get saved, everything's going to be just be a bed of roses. You know that old song? Right. I beg your pardon. God didn't promise you a rose garden, but you know what? He did promise you this that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You can count on that. If, boy, if you've done that, I'm telling you right now, you're born again by God's spirit. He's going to bring you home. He's going to finish the work he's put inside of you. He knows what to get you to go through. He knows how to work on you from the inside out. God makes a change by his spirit, by his word, and by his spirit. And you know what? It's a wonderful thing to be a child of God, but don't you quit. No, 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 no. And don't you tell me it's impossible. If a white man can go to a black college and earn the title black all-American, tell me what God can do. God, so he's raising dead people. That's a miracle right there. You know, I always tell people we have come this far by faith, and that's my Amen. Answer. We have truly, and I know I have by faith. Yeah. I've fallen sometimes, but you know what? I got back up, and I think, you know, Everyone, people that do your job and and preach and and, and, and pass the word Ooh, of the Bible the just touches Spirit. me and my wife, who's yes. who basically brought me back from where I was because I fell short sometimes. And this I man used do. to weigh 450 pounds. I don't mean to cut you off, but we got about two minutes. He used to weigh 450. I seen his picture. That's a big man. People think I'm big. He, he was a lot bigger than me. And I'm gonna tell you something. This is a giant in the faith. 
You know why? He's still going, still sharing his testimony. Out here, got a book. What's the name of that book, Chet? The White Golden Bull. Here's Chet's book. It's called The White Golden Bull. That's because the your college was called the Golden Bulls, right? Right. And I also found out another thing about this man. He was he won the first state of North Carolina tough man contest. Folks, I'm gonna tell you right now, is Jesus real? Jesus is real. I'm here living proof. Is there any other way to be saved? It's the only way. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Christian friends, what a wonderful thing. Hope Chet lives here in the local area. Hope you have a blessing. If you if you got a church, let him come testify or whatever. But you know what? I believe we're talking to some people right there. Maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you're like, man, I need that Jesus. Something's dealing with my heart. That's called the Holy Spirit. And you just need to surrender your life right now. And it's so simple. You got to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on the cross. He shed his blood to pay for your sins. And more importantly, you got to believe that God raised him from the dead. And you want him to be Lord of your life. That's It's that simple. And the Bible says, if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that's the word of God and God can't lie. And you'll believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's real simple right now. If God's dealing with your heart, you want to be saved. Why don't you just bow you right where you're at? I don't care if you're in jail or you're in the biggest mansion around here or the finest lake house that's ever been built. Why don't you just say this prayer with me right now? Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. I believe you died on a cross for me. I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive my sins. I want to, I'm want i changing my mind. I'm changing my life. I, I'm going to be a follower of you. Come into my heart. Fill me with your spirit, Lord. I want you to be the Lord of my life. And Lord, I want you to use me like you've used Chet right here in this world. Christian friend, you let God be God and you let him be Lord of your life and you follow the Holy Spirit. He's got a plan for your life. I'm telling you, it's a good plan. It may be challenging, I'm telling you, but you know what? There's a time coming we're all going to be in heaven together. And I just want you to know how much I love you. God loves you. He wants you to be saved. And until next week when we come back on there, please pray for us. We're praying for you. Thank you for watching Salvation Celebration, presented by Christ for All People Ministries. If this ministry has been a blessing to you and you want to help us, you can pray for us. You can become a monthly partner by giving a love offering of any amount on a monthly basis. You can make a one-time love offering, or you can volunteer to help us. Please contact us at the address on your screen. track with God by watching Salvation Celebration. Christ for All People Ministries helped me get saved and changed my life. If you want to see more young people like me find Jesus, become a monthly partner. The more partners we have, the more people we can reach. Run your race to win! Please contact us at the address on your screen.